Shohei Otani proved to be too much for the Red Sox. The Angels offense proved to be too much for the Red Sox. And the Red Sox bullpen just was not enough for the Red Sox on Thursday. Welcome to the Locked On Red Sox podcast. Happy Friday. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. And another day, another loss. The Red Sox lose yet another series. Nothing changed on Thursday at Fenway Park. And it was just an ugly showing from the offense. Trevor Story went 0 for 4. You had the bullpen. Tanner Houck was tagged for seven runs. Rich Hill pitched well, though. There, there, there are bright spots from this game. He was one of them. There's a lot to there's a lot to break down here. We are going to talk about Trevor Story's dreadful day, Rich Hill's nice day, and his last three starts have been very, very good. And we're going to talk about Garrett Whitlock because is he doing the Red Sox more harm by staying in the starting rotation? To no fault of his own, he doesn't. He, he just listens to when he's pitching next. But should he be in the bullpen? We are going to do a little bit of a deeper dive. Let's jump right into it. You are locked on Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am your host, Nessens Lauren Campbell. I am flying solo today. Jake Ignazuski, Massachusetts Pirates team insider and my co-host is busy with working with the Pirates today. So he will be doing that. I will be doing this and we are going to be talking about another Red Sox loss. And it is May 6th. The Red Sox are well below 500. They are fighting the Orioles for last place in the AL East. Not the best first month and change for Boston to say the very, very least. Their latest loss coming Thursday, 8 nothing to the Angels. Shohei Otani was unreal. He was so good. He was so dominant. And he struck out 11 Red Sox batters. He was working really well, and he did some damage at the plate too. This guy is this guy is absolutely unreal. But th- there was some good, and that good was Rich Hill. He pitched yet another strong start, and his last three starts, he's 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 gone four innings, given up four hits, no runs. Four innings, one hit, no runs. Five innings, one hit, no runs. So you see the common denominator there, and that is the no runs. Yes, of course, you would like him to go a little bit deeper into games. It was nice to see him get into the fifth recently, but you'd like him to go into the fifth more consistently, maybe even into the sixth. Not necessarily finish the sixth inning, but if he can get in there, then that would be ideal, especially with this bullpen. These relievers can't be trusted. They're getting taxed. They're getting overused at this point, but Rich Hill is a bright spot right now. Rich Hill also is only the fourth pitcher ever to make three consecutive scoreless starts at the age of 42 or older. That's from the Boston Globe's Alex Spear. So you still like to be able to see him compete at an older age and give the Red Sox a a chance to win because they're not getting too much of it from their offense. And you're obviously not going to win games when you don't score runs. And Otani is an incredible pitcher, but you need to be able and I've preached this for the last few weeks, you need to be able to score with run in scoring position. It was a pitcher's duel for a little while, and then all hell broke loose when Tanner Hell came on the mound. He was charged with seven runs. Not good. N- not good for Tanner Houck. It's unfortunate that he can't really get into a groove. He pitched well before the Red Sox went to Toronto, and he obviously couldn't go to Canada because he's unvaccinated. And since then, since the Red Sox came back, He just has not been able to really get into a groove. And maybe that could be from being a starter than being a reliever. You're going to start here. You're going to go to the bullpen. And it does mess with with your your mental preparation, your physical preparation. So maybe that's it. And when there is a chance to, to come in and keep the game close, maybe even try to save the game, like I said, keep that game close, you have to do it. Because there's no one in that bullpen that can be trusted. And it was just... It got ugly really fast for the Red Sox, but Rich Hill and the starters as a whole have been very, very good for the Red Sox. And just how good you might ask? Well, I have the answer for you. The Red Sox starters going into Thursday's game 
had an AL best 181 ERA in their last 14 starts. So they had given up 14 earned runs over 69 and two thirds innings pitched. That's from Sox Notes on Twitter, JP Long. Really good follow. Awesome person to get your stats from. So I got that from him today. And I wanted to look back in those 14 games to see how how many of those the Red Sox won because you see the 181 ERA over the 14 games. That's a solid sample size. So I went back and looked at those 14 games. The Red Sox won three of those. So they went three and 11 in those 14 games. Oh, wow, that's bad. And I think that really truly highlights the problem here for the Red Sox, which is not the starting pitching. It's the offense. It's the bullpen. And it's becoming increasingly annoying every single day with the bullpen because you don't have somebody you can trust. Jake has ranted on and on about this, that the closer situation needs to be figured out. We saw that Wednesday with just an absolute mess. The Red Sox would have won this series on Wednesday night, but Jake Diekman couldn't put the game away. And this goes back to who the hell do you have in that bullpen that you can trust? And the answer is no one. But much like the bullpen, the offense also isn't doing anything for this Red Sox team either. You saw Trevor Story go 0 for 4 on Thursday, four strikeouts, and he heard the Boo Birds from Fenway Park. So these Red Sox fans are are frustrated with Story and striking out. You, you signed this big deal to be here. You're supposed to be an offensive powerhouse. You're supposed to help try to spark this offense. And the Red Sox signed him to add offense to this lineup, and he's not doing that. He had a great game Wednesday. He had a couple doubles. He looked good. I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's turning the corner here. But Thursday was just ugly. He did not look good at the plate. His timing was not there. And I know he had the shortened spring training. His wife gave birth to their child. And then he had the bout with food poisoning. So he probably was going to take a little bit longer to get his swing there, get his feet under him. But we are... In May 6th, he's had enough games now to try to get that swing, to get away from Coors Field. You can get that swing back, get your timing right, and it's just not working for him right now. I'm not going to give up on him. I'm not panicking. I'm not going to say he's a bust by any means, but Red Sox fans are impatient with him right now. And again, this is an Angels team that you should have beat Wednesday night. This is an Angels team that you had a chance to capitalize on. It was a great game Thursday until all of a sudden it wasn't. And that was the seventh and eighth and ninth inning. Just everything unraveled for the Red Sox. But Trevor Story had chances here to put the ball in play. He couldn't do it. Four strikeouts does not look good for him, of course. Maybe you can look at it and be like, well, it was Shohei Otani and the dude's an animal. But uh, not, not good for Story. Not a good Thursday. He's going to want to put that one behind him. Hopefully, he's not even thinking about it. He can just bounce back, and maybe he can go four for four on Friday night. Who who knows? I, I hope so. But the Boo Birds were, were out and about. My fiancé was at the game, and he texted me. that was like, whoop, Trevor Story's here in the booze tonight. And, I mean, I, I get it. I know, like I said, the fans are are growing impatient with Trevor Story, and he they want him to try to generate this some offense for a team that has no offense right now. And he's not adding anything to this team in crucial moments when he should be. And unfortunately, it's just not working that way. But I'm still going to say it's early in the season. However, we do have a month and change under our belts here. And this cannot keep going on. This is going to be a long season if the Red Sox are going to play like this. And then it just makes you go back to the offseason where there was bullpen help right there in front of you. There was bullpen help that you could have signed and the Red Sox decided not to. And I still like the Trevor Story signing, but the glaring area of need was never the offense. It was the bullpen and the amount of games the Red Sox could have won this season already had it not been for some of these relievers maybe their record looks a lot different. Maybe they're hovering around 500. Maybe they're just above 500. They're not this bad if they have the bullpen help they needed. They're also not this bad if the offense could just do something every now and then. But there have been blown leads. There's been blown saves. There's been blown everything because this bullpen cannot hold a lead. But coming up in our second segment of Locked on Red Sox, we're going to continue this trend of the bullpen and kind of look into should Garrett Whitlock be 
put back as a relief pitcher for the time being. We will talk about that in our third, in our second segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast. But first, I do want to tell you about Built Bar because summer is coming. It's just over a month away. And with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. And Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on your family vacations. Throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you are fueled for your summer adventures. And the best part about Built Bars, they're healthy and they're delicious. So you don't have to sacrifice delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's easy because all you have to do is go to Built.com and order right now. All Built Bars and their puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. So that means with Built Bars, you can eat healthy and actually enjoy it. And if you have not tried the Built Puffs yet, you 100% have to. We here at Locked On are going crazy over the puffs. They come in a ton of different flavors, banana cream pie, even churro. Who doesn't want a protein bar that tastes like a churro? I know I do. They're so delicious. And like I've said, giving cookies and cream, the Built Bar cookies and cream, a run for its money for my all-time favorite. Plus, they're only 140 calories. Built Bar, make sure that there is something for everyone. Coconut almond, mint brownie, there is a flavor for everyone, even the pickiest eaters. And most Built Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Go to Built.com to get all of your favorites, banana cream pie, raspberry, double chocolate, so many more. They're all delicious, and there's new flavors coming out all the time. Head on over to Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. This episode also is brought to you by Blue Nile. And with Mother's Day coming and all of life's other special moments, Blue Nile can help you create the custom engagement ring, a classic necklace, there's tennis bracelets, something for mom, something for every special person in your life. And with Mother's Day this Sunday, Give mom something shoulder forever with fine jewelry from BlueNile.com. And Locked On Sports listeners get $50 off a $500 purchase. This podcast exclusive is only good through Mother's Day. Use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured, ships free, and arrives in discreet packaging that will not give away what's inside. So if you are trying to hide something from mom, or if you do get the custom engagement ring and you don't want your fiance to find out, you know that it will be safe and secure with Blue Nile. Shop stress-free and find your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Thank you for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen. And now for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So we talked a lot about the bullpen and its struggles in the first segment. And in the second segment, I have asked you if Garrett Whitlock should go back to the bullpen or if he should stay in a starter role. And I know that I have said before, I do not like when teams flip-flop their players from bullpen to starter, starter to bullpen, because like I mentioned in the first segment, it just messes with their preparation mentally, physically, and you just don't want to burn them out for any reason. Garrett Whitlock has been so, so good in that starting role for Boston. He's given the relievers some rest. He's proving that he can be a reliable MLB starter. However, I just think he's he's so good right now that he needs to be in the bullpen because you lose him. Once he starts, you lose him for the next five days. And there is still the possibility you could lose him for two or three days if he goes four innings out of the pen one night, but you need that reliability out of the pen. If I'm looking at the relief pitchers or if I'm looking at all the pitchers and I'm looking at who should go into the bullpen, it should not be Nick Pavetta. I, I, his control and command is all over the place right now. I would not trust him in the ninth inning. If it is a bases loaded situation, there's two outs and you need somebody to come in and get that final out. I'm looking at Garrett Whitlock. He's been one of the only reliable people out of the bullpen this season. And I know, and I've preached this at the bullpen has not been the entire issue this season because the Red Sox offense is just abysmal right now. But some of these games that the Red Sox have lost has been because of the bullpen, not being able to put the game away. Garrett Whitlock can put the game away. And I don't know if you should just put him in the bullpen for the rest of the season until the all-star break because Chris Sale and James Paxton are coming back at some point this season. 
And you're going to assume that they're going to slot right into the starting rotation. Yes, you look at Nick Pavetta. Like I said, he is struggling. But with Garrett Whitlock, you just, ah, like, I just, he needs to be in the bullpen. And I think he's just too good to lose for five days, especially right now with this Red Sox team. He needs to come into these situations. He's always so confident. He can get those outs. We know he can get those outs. We have seen it since last season. And maybe at the trade deadline, go get some legitimate bullpen help. Go get a setup, man. Go get a closer because we need a closer. It's so obvious. This closer by committee is not working for Boston. So put Garrett Whitlock back in the pen. Put him in there till the all-star break. Put him in there till the trade deadline. Put him in there till next season. Make this a long-term thing. But right now, it's hurting the Red Sox more to have him as a starter than it is in the bullpen. No, you're not going to use him every single night. That's obviously irresponsible, and that's just not going to happen. But if you can use him three or four nights out of a five-day week, that's good. That's good for the Red Sox because he is somebody who is going to get this team those big outs, those scary outs, those outs that Red Sox fans are watching right now, and it's spiking their blood pressure because they're watching Jake Diekman run in from the bullpen to the mound thinking, why in the world is Alex Cora going to Jake Diekman right now with the game on the line? It is incredibly obvious that Matt Barnes does not have anything going for him right now. And I do appreciate that he is holding himself accountable. But now it's at the point where he's been so bad since the second half of last season where it's like, why can't you figure it out? And I'm no professional athlete. I don't know what, what he's going through. I don't know what's going on in his head, if he's dealing with any sort of injury or ailment. But he just does not have it. And he cannot be trusted. I wouldn't even trust him with an eight-run lead at this point. That's just how inconsistent and shaky he's been. So I think it would be wise for the Red Sox to put Garrett Whitlock back in the bullpen, get the relievers. They, they need some rest too. But you obviously, you don't want to overwork Whitlock by any means. But the Red Sox need someone reliable and somebody trustworthy out of that pen. And that is Garrett Whitlock. So let me know what you think. I, I am very pro Garrett Whitlock going back to the bullpen at the beginning of the season. I was pro Garrett Whitlock being the closer of this team. And I just think that at this point, I hate, I hate saying at this point in the season on May 6th, but at this point in the season, you need to do something before you get, before the Red Sox get themselves too far into a hole where they're playing catch up for the rest of the season. It's like the Boston Bruins right now. They're down two nothing to the Carolina Hurricanes. They have to play catch up. They have to win. They have to win the next two, but go listen to Locked On Bruins. I digress. So let me know in the comments what you think. Find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox. Shout it from the rooftops. I'm sure we'll hear it because it's we're just hearing a lot of screams of annoyance from Red Sox fans right now. It's it's a, it's a very mutual feeling. Yes, it's still early, but we can't keep saying it's still early. We can't keep saying it was a shortened spring training because other teams are beating up on the Red Sox. Other teams are making the Red Sox look silly. And guess what? A lot of these players also had shortened spring trainings, much shorter spring trainings than some other players out there. Every team had the same spring training schedule. Every team has played the same amount of games, roughly. The Red Sox have just not figured it out. And they are going to be running out of time to be doing so. Put, put Garrett Whitlock back in the bullpen. Please, Alex Cora, I am begging you. Put him back in the bullpen. Coming up in our third segment of the Locked On Red Sox podcast, as we always do, going to end the show with the Mental Health Minute. But first, I do want to tell you about Bet Online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting stats and sports info. Find all of the latest sports developments, league reviews and news, including this year's basketball playoffs, Major League Baseball in this weekend's Run to the Roses as the Kentucky Derby is taking place this weekend. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and so much more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and all the action. That's Bet Online where the game starts. So, for today's mental health minute, I'm going to ask you if you have a spare prayer, a positive vibe, or anything like that, if you could just send it my grandmother's way. We received news on Thursday that her brother, my great uncle, passed away at the age of 86. He had a great final day of his life my cousin posted that he went for a nice long walk he watched some stanley cup playoff games and his 
passing was peaceful. He was healthy until the very end. I was very grateful for my time with him. 86 years is a hell of a life. I'm happy I got to see him a few years ago when we did our family reunion in Nova Scotia. And now looking back, just very grateful for those conversations and the good times and the laughs and all of the memories. So if you could just keep my grandmother in your thoughts, I hate knowing she's upset. I hate seeing her upset. And this is this is her brother. So if you could just send all the positive vibes and love her way, I would greatly appreciate that. But I'm going to end this show there. Thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every single day. Rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked on Red Sox podcast right here on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to check out all the other great shows across the MLB network. Locked on Yankees, Locked on Angels, Locked on Astros, Locked on Rays, A's, Blue Jays. Everyone does an incredible job. If you're a Celtics fan, check out Locked On Celtics. If you're a Bruins fan, check out Locked On Bruins. They are in the middle of their playoff runs. The Celtics are giving Boston fans probably a little bit more hope than the Bruins right now. Be sure to find us on Twitter at LO underscore Red Sox, Jake at Jake Iggy, me, La 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 Lauren, three laws, Lauren with four R's. Be sure to check back Monday. We are going to recap the Chicago White Sox series. Hopefully we're going to be talking about wins and a series win. Let's cross our fingers. Let's manifest it because the Red Sox have got to turn things around. And now that you've made Locked On Red Sox your first listen, head on over and check out Locked On MLB to make it your second listen. Friend of the pod, friend of mine, Paul Francis Sullivan, but please call him Sully, gives you his unique perspective of major leaguers, both past and present. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. And as always, let's go Red Sox.